Ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the Martin Luther King Jr. Library at the Go-Go exhibit, and we are bringing you the N2L Band, which basically stands for Nothing to Lose uh, for the Next Generation uh, Celebration as part of the Go-Go Awareness Week. We want to thank the MLK Library, we want to thank our mayor, and also uh, King and Duffy and our city council who passed the legislation that was introduced by him to make Go Go DC's official music. Without further ado, I bring you N2L. Yes. We the interwell band, uh. Nothing to lose, never too late. I wanna thank Ronald Moten for having us up here. Second annual Go Go Witness. Cold Nick, Shelly. Go-Go exhibit. Very honored to be here. Yes, we are. Cold Nick, Shelly, hold on. Let's take them to the bridge, ladies. Without you, I'm just a fraction. Closing in on my Go 
do. It's clear that Gogo is not dead, right? And it's clear that we have a next generation coming up, right? I'm going to tell you something. I couldn't even put my son down. He's sitting here wanting to come back out to watch y'all play. He loves Gogo, by the way. So y'all, y'all, when the children say you sound good, you sound good. So I want to thank you all, right? And I want to say, you know, it's important that we get Go-Go back in the schools and stuff for the young people because it saved a lot of lives. And even though um, your, your band name is Nothing to Lose, we want to make sure the children don't feel like they have nothing to lose and they have something like this. Right? It's never too late, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, I got it wrong. Never too late, nothing to lose. Right, see, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense there. Okay, it's coming together. All right, so listen. Um, we are the GoGo Museum, and we're in a partnership with the MLK Library. So we'll be doing a lot of these showcases here and at the GoGo Museum when this opens up this spring. So we want to thank all our sponsors and partners who make this happen. And up next is the Experience Band. All right? I love y'all, man. Y'all keep on doing what y'all doing, man. God bless you. It's your guy, Ron Moten, and we're doing an interview with nothing to lose, never too late. Man, that sounds like a transition. I'm a transition to this interview. Yeah. You know, man, um, first of all, I want two dollars, man. I want to thank you for all the positive things you do. Thank you. Uh, on social media, because a lot of the younger people, they think they got to do something crazy to get attention. And you show young people that you can still have fun and be positive and put positive energy into the universe. But yeah. I got to tell you, man, and now y'all step, y'all game, but yeah, man. Yeah, you know. Y'all been, y'all been practicing heavy, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, That's why you're always in the studio, That's huh? it. That's always it. You got to work. Practice make perfect, man. Practice make perfect. Yeah, so I want to start off by, by, you know, I was reading your bio, and you were talking about y'all started in school when you first created the band because y'all had nothing to do, and y'all wanted to find something positive to do, to do and not get caught up in all the violence in the streets. And it reminds me of all the bands that came before you, you know, uh, Junkyard, mm -hmm. Rare Essence, you know, Sugar Band EU, all of them mm -hmm. started because they didn't want to do what their friends were doing, mm -hmm. which was violence. So when they took music out of the school, yeah. it was devastating for yeah. our young people. And, you know, and I love hip hop, I love rap, don't get me wrong, but we kind of took something, we robbed our young people yeah. for like 15, 20 years of something great that we were exposed to. Yeah. So why is it important for you, the next generation, mm -hmm and the generation coming behind you to have the opportunities that those before you had? Well, it's important each one teach one. That's the first thing. And it's important to save people's lives like this saved our lives. Um, we all came from neighborhoods and hard times or what have you. And some of us, not all of us actually, I was a little more fortunate. Right. But being fortunate, I was able to share. My mommy was there. Yeah, I yeah, mommy. Mm. yeah. Moms was there. <laughs> so being fortunate, I was being, I was able to share that. Right. With, 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 uh, with first the, one of my founders that helped me right. start the band, Mike right. G. Um, and seeing him from the other side of the track, and being able to come together and create something positive, it saved all our life. Okay. Anybody you know? want to speak on that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this our culture. Just what we got, like what everywhere else could say they got whatever they got, I'm saying. Uh, I don't know, to be honest, because I'm so stuck on my coach. I know what we got. That's why I always, I love Go-Go. I, stu I stuck with it my whole life. I'm going to keep on sticking with it because it's ours. How old are you now? I'm 33 now. You're 33. When did you start in the band? What, 15. Yeah. 15. 15, right? 15. So, so I want to bring, I, I want to make that point. So this is the next generation, right? And I tell people that you guys, even though you, you know you consider the next generation, are gonna start how to reach back to the next next generation, because if we don't get the next group of youngs involved, gentrification tried and started it. You know them, they, they took the music out of school in 19, I believe 97, when the control board came. So that was the start of the attack on our music, right? But if we don't get back to the youngest, I mean, they beating their feet, but we got to get them back in the studio. And that's one of the things we're going to be doing with the Go-Go Museum, by the way. Okay. Live studio recording for bands, free, where they can come in and make music, those who are trying to make their own original music. So that, that's very important. What, what do you think about that? That sounds good. That's what I was say. When we was young, we only had three choices. It was Tupac, Biggie, and Go-Go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I didn't even know all these other rappers was really, because it was just 
Tupac, that, Biggie, and Go-Go. Yeah, and that's Go-Go. all. Because, yeah, that's, matter of fact, that, that's how anybody was. couldn't play in D.C. It was just okay. Go-Go, right? Yeah. Straight Go-Go. And, 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 and so let me ask you all something. What do you all think about Go-Go? Um, and I'm going to ask a sister a question, too. Okay. What do you all think about Go-Go since Don't Mute D.C., uh, the whole movement from Don't Mute D.C. to Mochella and all the other things that were going on kind of activated Go-Go again? Where oh, yeah. people are playing everywhere, you know what I'm saying? And people respect it more and people love it more, people understand it more. Absolutely. So what do you think about that as a woman and the opportunity of being a man, a band with a, uh, amongst a, 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 some great brothers? Mm-hmm. It's like redemption. You know, I grew up with older siblings who always had their favorite brands like BYB or Junkyard, you know, listening to Chuck Brown. So as a youngin, it was more so like, ooh, what's this sound? Like, I don't know what it is, but I like it. Right. And then when I got older and got the opportunity to join the band with them, it was unfamiliar territory, but I fell in love with it. Like, I, right. I've always performed, I've always sung, but nothing gives me the type of, like, feeling, vibe that Go-Go gives me. Like, it's, it's a good time. Like Mike G said, it's a culture thing. So you feel like you're amongst your, your own, you know? It's okay. something that you see like-minded individuals grooving and loving the same thing that you do. So, okay. yeah. You want to say something to that, brother? Yes, sir. You want to say something? <laughs> you know, I didn't really want to talk, but I can talk. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I was the outsider. I came into, they was all together in school and stuff okay. like that. So I was the baby of the band when I came. Okay, in. okay. Um, and this guy right here has always been a big brother that I never had. Okay. So to be in like a, most bands, always got a big brother. Yeah. Right, right. So mm-hmm. to be in a, a group of young young boys trying to develop into young men, and you know to have a brotherhood and to stick together no matter what outside of the music, mm-hmm. and when you transition into the music, it's like, you know, I got you no matter what, in out wherever we are, we are family. So it brings a sense of family and and connection together when we can all come together and make beautiful music together. Okay, so. And I was just going to say, that's what the Mochella and the Don't Mute DC, that's what those organizations started to do again. It started to unify the culture. Because with that being able to be outside, not only the people that's trying to gentrify the city, they get to hear it as well. So um, it's like whenever you go out of town and you just taste their food, this is is that original go-go DC taste. You know what I mean? You can only get it here. You know what I mean? And um, y'all put it on a platform where everybody can have it right. for free. I right. remember when we was coming up in school, <laughs> sh- them go-go's, we, 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 sometimes you you, you know, it, but see, that's what I, I think, like you were saying, connecting back to the youth, we had those all ages. So I remember- We still we, don't have them today. We don't have them today. We got to bring re- them back. I'm working on that. Yeah. Right. But I, I remember we'd be in school all week talking about Friday, how we get, man, we all going to, you all going to the party. To a point. Yeah. I got two more questions before we close out. Yes, sir. So I always tell people that when we see the violence in the street, uh, the government, police, uh, gentrifiers, uh, all these people had something to do with violence. Like this is the, the aftermath mm-hmm. of you attacking our culture because on every single weekend and during the summer four or five times a week our young people had somewhere to go mm-hmm. and what we do with go-go is we let one incident Mess kill up. the whole culture yep. and you know i try to get go-go people to to do a study because at the same time they were, were accusing go-go things we had like eight people killed on k street mm-hmm. had nothing to do with go-go yep. but it wasn't shut them down right yep. so now Years later, over a decade later, it's been like 12 years since we had all age go-go's, right? Yeah. So now, all these years, young people to this day have nowhere to go on the weekends. So they created their own spaces with no supervision, with nobody to give them positive attention, and now they're doing crazy things to get attention. Yeah. So that's a direct, you know, uh, 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 contrast uh, and, and result of people, like, killing our culture. Yeah. So we got to, you know, we got, what do you think about that? Um, like I said, bringing back those platforms for the kids. Because mm-hmm. like you said, when they go into unsupervised space, one thing about the go-go, we still had security. Yep. Even if, when it was 18 and older. It still right. was done at a certain, it still was done by a certain time. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yep, parents yep. Parents. Had parents, you even had parents, momages and daddages that been a part of, you know what I mean? But that's a part of the 
culture. Right. You know what I mean? And um, when you coming up in, in the old ages, I remember y'all used to have kitty cabarets. That's yep. what y'all used to call it. We, kitty. When, they, when they were shutting Go Go Down, I remember uptown, see if I don't smoke the brothers. We had them in our building yeah. the first time they shut it down. Yeah. And we had the space for the younger. Yeah. And it meant everything. You know, the band still come up to me today and say, man, y'all saved us up C5, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's what that did. It, it gave us places where we knew, okay, we all going to be here. Our parents knew where we were. Right. And we were all listening to, we, were, we became stars young. Right. Because all our fans grew up with us since we was in high school. Right. You know what I mean? Young kids too, but we, we was these young kids too. But it seemed like we had... We just had, a, a, like, Go-Go kept us out of trouble. Like, it just gave us that. It gave us something to look forward to, you right. know what I'm saying? Even after school, band practice, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, like, that was homework. Like, band practice homework. So, you know what I'm saying? You still got to get it, get it right, with you get, get your craft right. So, you know what I'm saying? A so, lot of lives. Go, and this goes lives. back 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. If you talk to all the bands, they say the same thing. And, Man, Junk, y'all, we was in Burry Farms, man, and Go-Go saved us. And it was, you know what I'm saying? And it was crime, you know was... and it was crime back then, too. The same, right. you same, know, probably yeah. even worse. Or yeah. But young as one dying like now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because we yeah. had nothing but the music kept us. Right, something to look forward to. Gave us something to look forward to. Yeah. That's all we got. So. I got I got one more question. Um, no, nah, I'm smacked up. One more question. So as you know, uh, shout out to Brother Kakai who helped um, work with the Grammys and make it possible for Go-Go to get a Grammy now, right? Mm -hmm. So, but you had to create original music. Um, are you all working on something so you can submit so that you can possibly get a Grammy? Because I tell people, like, we got to get back to doing original music. These brothers, you know, they made it so, and sisters made it so that we can be a category now. Yeah. You know, it's a category there that we can fit into produce some music, and guess what? We can get a Grammy now. So yeah. what are you doing to possibly so, do that? what we've been doing since we started, we always had original music. Um, and again, from perfecting your craft, we're all artists first. Right. You know what I mean? We all write, produce, and do music. And a lot of credit don't go to the self-taught musicians mm. that Go-Go. Mm. Like, Go-Go has roll. some of the best, the, some of the best musicians that ever touched instruments. And, um, couldn't even read music. Couldn't even read music. The, mo mm -hmm. the most of them couldn't even read music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So to be able to to um, compete with anyone that went to Juilliard or any one of those top Duke music Ellington schools, Duke Ellington, Ellington or what have you, that's 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 something in itself. But as far as for the Grammys, we have, we have about three three original songs that. I think all you need is three or four, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So well, I, I, I look following. forward um, to hearing what you put oh, out, man, for sure. and I look forward to having you at the GoGo Museum and future events at the MLK Library. For sure. But I can tell you, the way y'all sound, the chemistry, the formula that you all have created, yeah. you are y'all on the way up. I appreciate all that. Right. Peace and love, man. Peace and love. All right, y'all. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are again. My name is Ronald Moten from the GoGo Museum, and I'm here at the Martin Luther King Jr. Library GoGo exhibit. Uh, we're starting this uh, series of performances of our version of the Tiny Desk. We call it the Pocket Desk. And basically what we're doing is showcasing the next generation of go-go artists uh, doing the pocket and the bounce uh, here and at the Go-Go Museum. Uh, this is very important for the preservation of our music. And me and Zaire are here to introduce the next band, the Experience Band and Show. This band started on the streets of D.C. and we'll talk about that later. But Without further ado, we introduce the next up and coming band, the next generation, the experienced band and show for Go Go Preservation Week. How y'all doing? We are the experienced band and show. I'm Travis the Trombone King. And to my left, we got the beautiful Princess Jatah. Hope you enjoy what you're about to hear. It's a little thing that we done cooked up called Jafungo. It's our version of gumbo with a little bit of mumbo sauce in it. You get what I'm saying? It's like a fusion of jazz, funk, and go-go that just mm, feels so good. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. We are the experience, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 
girl. I need to worry, yeah. I sacrifice my time. I need the love from one another. And the joy that I give is the joy that I need. I wanna give you all of my love. Loving you. Every day.
is an original piece of the Experience Band and Show. This song was created at Farragut North Metro Station. And it just speaks about this city, our interpretation of the city. This song is called Farragut by the Experience Band and Show. Now available on all streaming platforms.
so far But you should have known it Princess Jatar. Yeah, we are the experience band the show. Let's party. Uh, check it. Come on. Uh-huh. Check. I know y'all seen this on the video. True. I know you heard me on the radio. So true. But they still don't. Pay me no attention. Keep listening to what your girlfriend's been Say saying. what? Because he a, he a, he a freak. Who, me? Got a different girl every day, other week. Huh. It's cool, don't want to put the brush on you. I got to let you know. Come on, baby. Oh, I Say what? need to know. You singing now? Where we stand. Where we stand now, Do baby. we share this special feeling for love? I know I do. What, what? what about you? Say what? Because I need you in my life. Say what, girl? Love it, yeah. With the acting, 
Uh-huh. Why you count your dues thinking I'm a cheat you? The only thing I'm gonna do is free. Come on. Keep your own sense. I got my own forget. And I be doing things that you won't regret. You told the princess, so y'all best take heed. Shall we proceed? And I'm a no shade if I can't. We love Rare Essence. Shout out to Rare Essence, legendary True. go-go band. But, I mean, we should do 3 in the morning the way we do it. True. True. And this is up and coming, right? This is up and coming, so and we, we are that. Yeah, let's do it our way. Thank you so much. Y'all y'all, y'all, y'all sound amazing today, by the way. Thank you. You right. Thank you, thank you. You right.
boy bulletproof, no, I got shot, you can see the proof. Blind eyes can look at me and see the truth. One day it's me do, cause I believe in you. God, I can't believe in you. Got my brother, why? You're low, and if you, I, I got some hate on me because I'm hiding in the trust. Worry they ain't on me because I ain't never strong with you. Again, we are the Experience Band and Show, also known as the People's Band. We started off in the streets of Washington, D.C., and now look at us. Thank you so much. We hope y'all were entertained. So before we leave, we always preach about putting love back into our community. To be the change you want to see, it first got to start with you. We want to ask y'all to listen to the song with us and just think about unity and oneness. Let's go, fellas.
Let's give him a round of applause, y'all. Once again, the experience band. You got to understand this. One of the members started playing on the streets and pretty much was on the streets, right? And that's the social power. That's the power of music. It can elevate our spirits and keep us going until we make it, right? And it's an example of the, the need of music in our city. Um, a lot of people have attacked our music going back to Africa. You know, when they found out the power of music, they tried to destroy the music, and the same thing happened here in Washington, D.C. And this is one of the bands that kept music alive in D.C., playing on the streets for free for years. Uh, Y'all used to see them down on 14th and U Street, crowds of people around them while they played, and then eventually they started getting into places to play, right? And now they're playing around the country. They played in the Kennedy Center. They played in some great places. And the other thing is, the youngest member is 21. See, that's very important because you won't find too many bands in this city that's a, that has a band member that's 21 because of the attack on our music and our culture. And if we're going to keep music alive, go-go music alive, we got to bring young people back into it by giving them platforms like this to perform and showcase the music. And I, I close with this. One of the reasons why you see a lot of violence in our community is because young people don't have positive platforms to get attention. And we have to make sure that we give our young people positive platforms to get attention so that they can be incentivized for doing the right thing instead of being incentivized for doing the wrong thing. So uh, without further ado, we thank you. Like, like I said, I want to thank the MLK Library for the partnership. I'm Ron Moat from the GoGo Museum. Up next, T.O.B. Band Show. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ron Moulton, and we're right here again at the MLK Library, the Martin Luther King Jr. Library, the new and renovated no library. I think it was like 80 million. Thank you, DC. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Council. Um, we're in the auditorium of the library, and we just had another great performance by another great up and coming band with young, young members as young as 21. In fact, with all the bands out today, I don't really know if it's a band that has a person as young as 21. Uh, and that's why we're doing this, like Next Generation. Uh, uh, recognizing the bands that are up and coming, but also the, the need for bands that will be coming behind them, and we have to pull them up and educate them and show them the way. Um, but man, let's, I'm gonna dig right into it. Um, you, you are a great, sexy band, diverse band, great looking band. Everybody got their little looks in the band and everything. That's why I like it, because you know, back in the day, it's like people had looks and style, you know what I'm saying? Some people were funny looking, some people were great looking, some people were, yeah. I mean, it was just, you know, it was just unique, you know, and y'all are unique. Um, but you all started in the streets, right? Uh, I remember going down 14th and U Street, seeing you playing in the street. What was that, what was, what's that journey been like? It's actually been a very good journey because it teaches you where you, to stay humble, basically, where you came from. Um, to play, play on the street, you have to work hard, meaning people not coming to see you perform. They going somewhere else to get their attention. You have to be good. You have to sound like something. You have to get better and better. One day we started out there, we was making $13. What's the most you ever made on the street? We made 15 a piece one time. 15 what? 1,500. Woo, what were y'all playing at that We day? was at Gallery Place, playing for, go down there. playing for <laughs> a, a Magic Dragon concert. Oh. We was down there on, at Gallery Place. They had a concert and we played out there and each one of our members left with 1,500. Speaking on that, you know, I'm um, co-founder of Don't Mute DC. Also, you know, we building a Go-Go Museum, a historic Anacostia, thanks to the city and all our great sponsors. But how did it feel when they tried to mute you and stop the street performers? It, it hurt because a lot of us don't have nowhere else to go to, sh to, to, to get better, to even show people we have a talent. So that's the first place we, it takes a lot to just go outside and say, hey, look at me. So we, we jumped out there and then to say, oh, it's noise. Marvin Gaye was a street musician. Wow, from D.C.? From D.C. A lot of people don't Chuck know that. Brown they was tore a us house down too. street we'll go ahead. musician. <laughs> we'll go ahead. Chuck Brown was a street musician. A lot of mu great musicians that came from D.C. started playing on the, on the corners. Right. So we might, we're going to have to do a piece in the museum on that, all the great street musicians that came from D.C. Yeah. Started from the corner. <laughs> yeah. Just like some of us. We was just doing the wrong thing. <laughs> hey, uh, so I, I want to ask some of the other band members, before I get to the guitar, 
Um, what has this experience been like for you? Give me somebody else tell me. Man, this experience has been wonderful. Um, like you said, like you stated, man, you came from the streets to the stage. Like, I don't have no other thing to do. This is my plan A, B through C. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have no other plan. Gotcha. It's like music is everything. So it was like by you trying to mute us and it, it, it made us feel some type of way with inside because music comes from within. Music comes from the soul, from the heart. So it's right. like, if you're crushing our heart, what kind of music are you gonna get? Right. You're gonna get the uh, distraught music. You're gonna get angry music. But we the type of people, we're the people's band. We always give back to the people no matter what. It's, not, it's never been about a dollar. Okay. We've always been on the streets, but it's a blessing to be able to go to the stage. Well, you know, I tell people, uh, I've done some great things in my life, but it was never about the money. It was about being great at what I do yep. and doing it from the heart. And then things fall in place. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. They watch social media and they think something's going to fall out the sky. You got to put your roots in the ground first and earn it. And then as you build an institution that will last forever. Definitely. Right. And, and that's what I think you guys and sisters are doing. Um, and I, I have a question for you, um, Jata. I remember um, bringing you in and um, we were doing a song and we were going in the studio. And y'all don't know if y'all know this, your child was just supposed to be speaking on the song. <laughs> you know, you know, I'll try to get her to do an intro, you know. And knowing she could sing, you know, us men, we think we know everything. I'm saying, well, she's gonna do an intro and, you know, cause she was a youth activist, youth mayor. And that's what I knew her uh, for until I knew she could sing later in life. Um, so when you, when you started that, you did, you, can, you can't mute us and you want a song and it went viral and you know, People ask you, you know, who's that young lady right there? And you start playing with other bands and then you landed right here. What's that experience been like going from the movement to where you at now? Mm. Um, the experience has been amazing. I would say I don't necessarily think I went from the movement to here because I'm still a part of the movement. Right. Every single day that we go out and perform, every single day that, you know, we collab with other bands or other artists go out, we still are a part of the movement. We still are a part of Don't Mute DC um, because you cannot mute us. Right. You can never mute us. Um, but it has been an amazing, life-changing experience for me um, to be able to be an activist, be a musician, be a creator, be an artist, and to turn around and put my passion into the music, to turn around and have you know, a band that is a family that I am with the Experience Band to show. Um, it has been absolutely life-changing. I. Thank God every single day. I thank Travis every single day. I don't thank him literally, but right. you know, I you know, just to be a part of this family that we have is one in a million. There are people who literally want to be in my spot. And I just thank God and I and I thank Travis for even seeing my potential and believing that this is where I'm supposed to be. So that's about it. All right. And and you're you were twenty when you started, but also, I was 18. Us, no, I'm 19. Oh, the time goes by so fast. Yeah, that was two I years know, ago, right? Literally. Just flies, man. <laughs> That's about to help you live your life because time goes by too right. fast. So, but also tell us, uh, you also uh, did some things beside a go-go legend mm -hmm. uh, in church. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that experience. Yes, yeah, so I started off in church at Ebenezer United Methodist Church on 4th and D Street. If y'all want to come and get blessed, come on and get blessed. Um, but yes, I started playing with Experience Unlimited, also known as EU, um, Sugar Bear, doing the butt. Wow. So yes, that's actually where I started at the age of 14, 15. Um, and my church decided to do Go Go Sundays um, to just try and get a bigger audience to come into the church and that's exactly what happened um and sugar bear and eu um junie uh everybody they they all used to be there performing for god um and so like mark said like man said they weren't doing it for the money they were doing it because of God. They were doing it because of the passion that the music gives them, you know. Um, we were just trying to bless everybody on, you know, every single Sunday, just give, give somebody hope, give somebody um, the ability to continue moving forward through this crazy, crazy thing that we call life. And so even then, even there from 14, 15, it gave me looks like, oh my God, who is that? Like she's right. 14, 15 single with EU, right. who does that? Right. Um, nobody but God, so okay. that's it. So I got a question for this guy right here. Um, I call him the style 
of the band. Um, Dennis Robin of the group. So, <laughs> I take that. So, 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 I mean, how does it feel like, you, you, to me, you bring flavor. You know, when people look at the band, you stand out. Right. And it's, I think that's important for a band to have different styles in the band, within the band. We got Black Jesus back here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, it's a real, you know, unique band, you know what I'm saying? He looked like Marvin Gaye a little bit, but he also, Definitely. when he do that, you know, we Talk got Guy, uh, 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 oh, Roger, no, everybody, yeah, yeah. So, right? so what, tell me. Um, I mean, we just try to get up and get dressed every day, you know what I'm saying, to tell you the truth. <laughs> That's all, I mean, I, I just, it's, you want to bring some type of, Essence, I guess, you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. want to have absolutely a look, you know what I'm saying? But it's not even like it's necessarily planned. It's just, it's kind of who we are, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like being an artist, you have the, a different mindset from, right. you know what I'm saying, the anybody, you know what I mean? From, out, you know, other other types of, you know, people who have different, different type of professions, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, with that being said, like I said, it's just really, I and we just kind of dress with like what feels good. It's not really about fitting in the Your norm. own style, right? Right, exactly. That's, it's, that's not what, about about, in. it's not about fitting in. It's not about um 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 you know what's in style at the time or anything like that. It's really about having your style, creating your style, and then as time goes on, you see other people jumping onto that. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? Then now, oh, we leading the way. You know okay. what I mean? And, and 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 you know, we just try to stand out. Really, that's okay. all it is. All right, and brother, so you know, you 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 mastered. That auto tone, the Shaka Khan might got something to say about this, but no, you mastered it, um, and, and you bring it into Gogo, -Go, which I think is unique. Um, when did you start doing that? Were you, did you start before you got with experience, or was it just something? Yeah, I started in college. Okay, <clears throat> I had a friend um, that did it, that was doing it in college, and he kind of taught me how to do it, and it's been about like ten over ten years now. I've been doing it. Okay. So yeah, it's been some time. It's okay. been time in. Yeah. So um, have you ever thought about one, one of the albums that you all do uh, and are you all working on the album because as I said to the earlier the first group you know brother Kakai shout out to him again uh, who's on the Grammys board uh, was smart enough to advocate to have uh, a situation where go-go music can get Grammys now right mm -hmm. um, in, in this specific category um, so I know you're working on the original music um, are, are you do you think that we can do a song like that because people like the auto tone that we can create that will put the go go in it and the auto tones and oh yeah we we in the lab right now working some stuff mm -hmm. up we, okay we're working some stuff up right now okay so uh, yeah be on the lookout for that okay all right and and, and uh, 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 what, what, what a grown man pocket oh, man. grown man <laughs> grown man pocket grown man pocket and as you you know you carry like new drummers right when I think of you I think of animal right but you got your own thing going on here right <laughs> so man you you know you. Pretty, pretty heavy over there. Appreciate you. So, man. so I mean, how does it feel to play with this band, and and what drummer would you compare yourself to in the past? You know, everybody talk about Foots and uh, Juju and all the other guys, Heavy One. You know, what I'm saying Buggy. Who would you, who did you model and go go, or do you look up to, or really like the best in go go uh, before your time? Oh um, man, grown man speaking. Um, honestly, I would have to say um, in the go go world. It, it would, it would, it would, it would really have to be, it would have to be Buggy. Okay. You know, I grew up listening to Aaron Spears. I'm not sure if a lot of people heard of Aaron Spears, but he's from the DMV. Okay. So I have the versatile style of music. Right. I can play any genre, right. all styles, any tempo, whatever. But when it comes to the DMV and the go-go of it, Buggy is who I listen to when it comes to placements. Okay. The pocket, his style, where he's going to go. Right. Okay. A lot of times, I don't even, I don't even know what I'm about to do. Okay. I just do it. It's just the spirit. It's, it's just spirit. my spirit. It's yeah. just a feel. You gotta. It's it's, yeah. it's okay to have talent. Yeah. But it's a, it's a difference when you have that feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having yeah. that feel and having talent are right. two different things. Mm -hmm. You, you, you know, know, what know I mean? um, yesterday, uh, backyard band was playing uh, <clears throat> Skylines, mm -hmm. one year anniversary in Ward Seven, and I had a friend that I had the um, FaceTime on, and I was showing them backyard playing, and I was because they got their own music there, yeah. and they still heavy on the drums and percussion, right? Yeah. So they got like drummer battles and all that type of stuff. Matter of fact, it's coming up next month on the 12th. Oh, this month on the 12th. And they were just amazed. I said, yeah, we got our own music too. Y'all yep. think y'all got y'all's? We got ours yeah, too. definitely. You know, and we're going to get that trip to Belize going, you know, with Shine and everybody. Oh, yeah. Take the band in and do a big event. It's coming soon. Oh, yeah. uh, and with that being said, anybody else want to say anything? Because I didn't get everybody 
And if, oh, and you too, bro. Yeah. But hey, and, and look, he unique too, because he got a little bead to hang right here. And, and, that, and, and look, Travis used to have one, but his hair grew, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, first of all, I'm Go Go Jew, Congo Jew, Timbali Jew, Jew, Bounce Beat Jew, whatever you want to call me, man. And I have been doing it for a minute. I'm the other half of that grown man pocket. You know what I'm saying? And uh, like my big brother, like my brother, uh, Backyard, oh, of course, that's one of my favorite bands, Buggy, Sauce. Man, the whole team, man, you know, I grew up listening to all of them. My favorite bands, I mean, favorite drummers, Northeast Groovers, of course. Okay. Stomp, all of them guys, man. Left Hand Love, man, a bunch of guys, man, a bunch of guys I could name. But I, I like to take a little bit from everybody and do my own thing. And I don't really talk too much, don't really do too much. Mm -hmm. You give me that, you know, yeah, give that, me that, that spotlight, I'm going to give you a show. The, the Northeast okay. Groovers are special to me. Um, a lot of people don't know um, I helped create Solo. Mm -hmm. And they used to practice in my basement. In my and house. That's one of my favorite. You know uh, and, and it was a, it was a great experience. Some great musicians, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's so much talent in Go Go, past and present, mm -hmm. and um, we just look forward to elevating and giving people like you the platform. Mm -hmm. It's appreciate our it, it's, it's really our time. Mm -hmm. It's y'all time, right? It's Go Go time, right? Yep. All right. Anybody else want to say anything before we close it out? Go ahead. I just wanted to say that Go Go is evolving, mm -hmm. and that's something that need to be spotlighted. Right. It evolved with Backyard, it right. evolved with Black Alley, and it's evolving again. Like, what we do is a new form of go-go because we put together our own genre, which is Jafungo. Okay. It's jazz, funk, and go-go mixed together. It's like a gumbo, how New Orleans put gumbo together, but right. DC put mumbo sauce in our gumbo. Right. So that's what we are, we are Jafungo. Okay, okay. Hey, Jafungo. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like some funky feet there, but. <laughs> All right. With that being said, y'all, the Spirits Band is show. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. And up next, the T.O.B. Band and show. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's Ron Moten and Zaire. He won't let it go. Um, we're here at the Martin Luther King Junior Library, Go-Go Preservation Week. And we want to thank everybody for watching. Now up. T.O.B. Band and Show. Once again, we want to thank the library for this partnership with the Go-Go Museum. And this band right here is special. We're going to get into a conversation later. But a lot of people heard about the Don't Mute DC movement. Uh, me and Chris go back some time and him doing positive things in the community, him and the band, when it wasn't popular. Uh, the, Do the Don't Mute DC movement made it popular. And it happened because this young man and his band were willing to play for free to activate and use the social power music to stand up against gentrification. So we'll talk about that later, but I want to bring another one of the next generation bands who are about the people and about the crank. Stay tuned. Yeah. This is the COB band show. Yeah, 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 yeah. They say what? Hey. Hey. And let your conscience be free, y'all. You don't know what the sounds of the T.O.B., y'all. Yeah. Pick up them children, stop that killing. 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 Pick up them children, stop
Stop that killing, pick up them children. Stop that killing, pick up them children. Stop that killing. One more time, breathe out. Go back. Pick the keys up, put the guns down. This is our town. This is our city now. Oh, y'all, we're gonna make sure y'all go vote. Your vote counts. Give me the outro, y'all.
Shoot it. 
the song. We gotta clap the song. When now it's time to clap it up, hey, up. Hey. yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh! 
tonight. Don't you be seen. Shawty wanna know me to dance tonight. Tonight. The GOB. Shawty wanna know me to dance tonight. Tonight. 2022. Let's give them a round of applause, y'all. So, like I said, T.O.B. is one of the bands that's responsible for the whole Don't Mute D.C. movement. They were doing it before it was cool to be activists in Go-Go. Um, and they, they on their way. Well, they here. They in all the magazines, all the documentaries. And we, we love them. And we about to have a conversation with them. Once again, thank you all for watching our last performance of Go-Go Preservation Week, a partnership with the Martin Luther King Jr. Library, uh, with the Go-Go Preservation Week and the Go-Go Museum. A uh, great partnership. We look forward to doing much more of this. Uh, these guys are special. Uh, i never forget that uh, performance y'all did at the Kennedy Center. And y'all brought the whole band, y'all brought the whole show and show what young people can do when they're given the platform to do the right things for the right reasons and when we get the right results. So thank you very much. God bless you. And y'all have a great, 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 great Go-Go Preservation Week as there are other activities and things to come. God bless you. Oh, man. Oh, man. Another great performance to close the night out with Go-Go Preservation Week at the Martin Luther King Junior Library. Uh, as we celebrate uh, Go-Go Preservation Week, I'm here with the T.O.B. Band. We have a lot of activities going on this week, uh, celebrating with the library, and uh, it's just wonderful to see my guy, his guys, T.O.B. band, because I, mean, I remember we was doing all the videos, man, about uh, K2 and everything and stopping the violence before it was cool to do. And I also remember um, when you uh, took to the streets when nobody else was doing it. You know, it became cool out the while, but you was willing to do it for free from your heart and soul and spirit. And it, it helped elevate you. And I always tell people, man, sometimes you got to just do the right things for the right reasons and don't worry about money, and then the money come. So I just want you to speak on that experience after you talk about how y'all got started. Well, we started back in 2003, but we didn't really come out until like 2004, so we gonna say 2004. And we started in middle school, actually, because we was like, like our oldest siblings played in go-go bands. And we, when we had, you know, they had the music programs in school. So, you know, we used to go to the music class and always be banging on the drums and the quads and the toms. And the music teacher told us, man, if y'all do what y'all supposed to do, y'all can come in and beat on the drums. He called it making noise, but we were selling right. this go-go. So right. then that's what really made us want to really start a band. Then we started in the garage like most bands in the uh -huh. basement. Then we made it to the studio. Then we, uh, my man mother started managing this, and that's when we started having some type of direction and structure with mm -hmm. the whole band. Mm -hmm. Like it was like we was basically like in a boy scout club, or you know what I'm saying? You would say because she right. kept it family oriented. We always hung together. We always 
was around each other. So, and then we met Walk Jam, one of the uh, iconic promoters in Go Go. We met Walk Jam, and he just boosted us to a whole nother level. And then from the rest was history. We was, you know, what I'm saying we started at playing at club levels, which is no longer mm -hmm. there no more. I mean, we played at the DC. All the clubs summer. are gone. Well, yeah, basically, yeah. Well, we, yeah. we was like one of the last yeah. Go Go for bands. young people. For, like we was one of the like last young go go bands to play at the black hole aka celebrity hall and you know the black hole went through trials and tribulations right. were getting shut down and so we was blessed to be to come out at the right time we came out at the right time right. when go go still was like go go and we had like Chris, a lot of venues let me ask you a question. how did it feel when chuck brown played with you well, and he kind of came to the stage and he basically stamped bounce beat music because a lot of the old ears like that ain't go go, -go. that ain't go go yeah. so how did it feel when chuck brown got up the, up there with the band and performed I got to tell people all the time, every interview I do, that was like one of my greatest moments of go-go. Cause like, you know, you hear about Chuck Brown being the godfather and you know, you know, listen to him when you was a kid and listen to him on the radio and you see the iconic pictures and Chuck Brown way. And you know, you just see so much about Chuck Brown in the, in the beginning of go-go and being the godfather in the forefront of go-go. So when that happened, that was like, basically like, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, man, the only person that really matters in go-go gave me his sign Stamp. off. You right. know what I'm saying? He stamped us. And then, unfortunately, two, three years later, he went to go be with the Lord. So it's just like a blessing because, like, how many people my age or people that's in a bounce beat band, which they didn't really classify as go-go, can say that they actually shared the stage with Chuck Brown. Like, right. You know what I mean? I done shared the stage with the best of them, but that's like all-time top favorite, so that was like one of my craziest experiences in Go-Go, and then just to like genuinely meet him, not like he was supposed to been there to like perform, you know what I mean? Chuck right. Brown don't perform for free, right. and he actually was just there because he must have been a friend of the family of the girl whose birthday party we played at, and he was in the back just listening to us, and then like my homie, God, he ain't with us no more, God rest his soul, so he came out there when we took a break, he said, man, Chuck Brown in the back. I said, man, Chuck Brown not back there. We go back there, and if for sure, if it was Chuck Brown in a suit looking shopping, and we went up to him, shook his hand. I, it was like one of the greatest moments ever in Go-Go because you, cause you would think people don't look at Go-Go people as stars, but we are our stars here in D.C. Right. DMV. So you stars yeah. outside of D.C. too, believe that it or too, not. That but. too, but I'm just saying, but to meet him and to really genuinely meet him and then he just, like, he gave us so much praise. and like you, I mean, you can see it on our face. You, you go look at the footage. We was just cheesing. Everybody right. was just cheesing because right. we was just like, oh, she's just Chuck Brown, and he performing with us. It's not like, it's like you dreaming, but it just, it actually happened. So. I, I, I gotta ask one, one of the other band members something. Um, even one of y'all, how, how did it feel when y'all performed with Wale at Baloo? When we had the show that we produced at Baloo and y'all was performing with Wale. How did that feel? One, even one of y'all. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, performing with Wale, for me, I kind of like, I try to, on a musical standpoint, I try to look at it like another artist, so I won't look at it like, <laughs> yeah. you know, so it won't be like, I'm caught up, so I won't mess up the music. Right. But the other tale of it is like, man, that's Wale. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know how much he do, he try to do for the city, this right. and the third, the artist, the level he on, you know what I'm saying? What we try to get to and what right. we try to go to. So at the same time, it's like, that's big, right. especially for this area, for somebody right. to still come back and then, right. you know what I'm saying? I don't know about y'all, but that was a good moment for me. You know what I'm saying? One of the few. Because okay. it actually wasn't the first time. I mean, it actually wasn't the only time he got on stage with us. Right. All right. Uh, what about you, Black? I have a phone boy. I mean, it was, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it was a more of a, like, like Marcus said, it was a different type of opportunity. You know what I mean? He's like, how we just said we are, uh, go, go, we are all our own stars. He looked at us, looked at us as stars as well. Right. So that kind of like, brought us like more, you know what I mean, more nourish, nourishment to us. And um, it was it was more of a blessing because it's like, you really were an artist. Like this is like somebody that be with Jay-Z and Rick Ross and you know, it's, it's, it's somebody that's really important to our city. So it was a, it was a big accomplishment to me. Okay, I, I wanna ask your brother something, Chris. Um, Cause you just singing in church, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of, a lot of, um, people in Go-Go sung in the church. They either were in the marching band or the choir or the church, play music. And a lot of bands who like play in Go-Go and never really made a lot of money, they made their money in church, playing in church. That's how they pay their bills a lot of times. What's that, what was that experience like? Like, how's it like the battle sometimes, even like, am I gonna do this, am I gonna do that? Or like, how do you balance it? And what's the feeling? Like, what was the transition about? Uh, for me, so, our family just is in the church, so 
me, I haven't honestly sang in church probably in like 20 years or so. Okay. That was like when I was like younger. But um, honestly speaking, I, our family didn't agree with us doing go go. Okay. You know I mean? like, okay. Me, I got. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? My first band was 3DB, and then they looked at what we was doing, and they started TLB. And I, we, I got blackballed, you know, for my family, the right. black sheep, wow. you know what I'm saying, treatment, you know what I mean? Cool. So it was just, it's one of them things, like, if you love to do something, you know what I mean, you're going to keep doing it. And, like, I mean, it's like they, they look at Gogo as secular music. And as an, as an adult with kids now, I can see what my mother's perspective was of me being 14 and 15, going out here all times of night, you know, et cetera, you know what I'm saying? But the one thing my father, he's, he's our biggest advocate for this. This is the reason why, you know what I mean, we was allowed to do it in the okay. first place. Because if it was up to mom, nah, we wouldn't have been in no bands. If it's something you passion, like my father discovered me at six years old as a singer. So, you know what I mean, like it, it's, if you're passionate about something, if you got the drive for it, he not gonna knock you from doing it. He gonna support you. And then right. he's seen that we have the drive and he's seen that we do it. Um, I say the biggest thing um, about Go-Go that is like the culture shock is, the hours, you know what I mean? That's that's really what it is. Like, you've been on stage, like I went to Duke Gunner School, the Austin, Paul McKinney Center, this place, that place, you know what I'm saying, beforehand. And the stage is the stage. You're going The same way you're going to perform there, you're going to perform in the go-go clubs. The only difference is the fact that the people that, like the Wale's, and there's no disrespect to the Wale's, the Trey Songz, or whatever else in the industry, they can't do what we do. Right. Because they need, like, vocal, you know, rehabilitation after, you know what I'm saying, a show. Versus right. we had five shows in five days. Right, You right. know what I'm saying? And, like I said, it's just the hours and the demand. You know, that was the biggest thing of getting used to on Go-Go. Other than that, stage is a stage, you know what I mean? But, I mean, everything comes, but it's going to come with it regardless. You can, from my conversations with gospel artists, they say some of the same things that are problems in Go-Go. You, you're going to see the same things in regular gospel music and church and stuff like that. So it's just, you know, but it's just all relevant to me. What's your favorite uh, go-go band, Old Head? My favorite go-go band, um, so uh, it's, it's two, um, what's three? Bad guys, everybody's favorite go-go band, you know what I mean? That's, but my favorite band, you know what I mean, if we're not doing the norm, is Raw Image and UCB. You okay. Know I mean? They're my favorite. Like, I literally argued with my old band, 3DB, when we first met and told them that they couldn't, Stand next to raw image. Right. We about to fight. You know right. what I'm saying? So it was, you know what I mean? So yeah. What about you? Well, I got, <clears throat> I got a couple of, about two or three of them. <clears throat> uh, of course, backyard. It's my number one. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. But I grew up on per elegance because my uncle. So okay. I understood, like as a kid, I understood the go go music and the go go flavor. Like who's your uncle? My, my uncle was Pedro. Okay. Okay. Pedro Lee Mike Lee talking for uh Per Elegance. I can think they call it the sounds of elegance now. Um I grew up, you know what I mean, on his behalf. Like he used to have me like at block parties in his hand on the mic leading around Congress Park. Had a big I'll never forget that's one like one of my biggest go go moments as a child. Like I was about five years old and he had me on the stage. It was on my birthday. My birthday's on the fourth of July. They had a big old block party around Congress Park. He had me on stage, they was performing, and he had me in his arms, like, really performing on the mic, and I was sitting there watching. So everybody used to think that I was gonna become one of the people that be on the mic in the band. But I'm some type of person that, like, I like to do my own. So I sat and learned how to play the keyboard. <laughs> and he used to fight for me to be like, man, yeah, I need you to be the lead talker, or be the rapper or something, because that's what he wanted to do. But as we got older, he understood, was like, man, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Like, you, you really went your own route and mastered your craft of what you like to do. And I was like, man, it's still in the same field. We still go-go brothers. You know what I mean? You my uncle. So we still go-go family. So he was like, man, the biggest thing he always told me was, like Chris, he said, they father said, if you're going to do it, stick with it. Because there was times where I was like, man, I don't know if I want to do the band no more, but <laughs> <laughs> nah. but uh, every times when I was a kid, I'm like, man, because I was so focused on the sports, and I'm like, but I just loved the, I loved the, the, the feel and the, and the, and the environment. I used to leave from a basketball game in high school playing basketball for Dunbar. I played basketball, and Chris and them, Tina B, they come to pick me up. I'm going home from my house, straight to my house. Sometimes I used to have to take a shower at the school, and we were on the way to the show. 
Mm. Like they picking me up for the show. So I, the moments it kept me and with like like with with this generation, I want them to understand is it kept it kept me it kept me and all my f other thirteen band members it kept us out of a lot of trouble. Yeah, that's, it that's kept us out of a night, lot of trouble. Night man. and day of you and some of your friends being here and not being here, right? Exactly. So y'all, y'all, do you all agree with me? I was talking earlier about how when they shut down all the all ages joints, right. all the shows. A lot of the violence is going on because. So let me let me let me explain this, and this is this is a crazy thing. So the way that the enemy can control and disintegrate you is they cut you at the reproductive state, and what I mean by that is, music cannot reproduce itself if the younger generations don't witness it, love it, and want to do it. That's why they want to do rap, and, and and the rappers drill music, and it's kill, 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 and and we we saying no, just shake your butt and have time, you know, have a good time, man, you know what I'm saying? Get you know, get a little tipsy, get a drink, and then go home, have you know what I'm saying, to your family. It's a generation who got between go go and today's you because, like you say, they don't have no outlets like how when we was growing up. It's not we, in the schools, and we, like, y'all just made the play they, in the schools. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we yeah. we started out bad from school because of the music players. They don't even have music in, in school. And that's no something more. that we're gonna like, you know, with the whole Don't Mute DC movement uh, and the movement that everybody's doing that we want to fight for is to get the music back in the schools. And also, you know, we used to do peace goals with people who was beefing with each other. I know. Never had one fight because it's a way to have events without people killing each other, right? But if you don't, like, make it an intentional in doing that, of course, something can happen. But yeah. it's better to take a chance on that than having youngins producing music where everything is talking about killing, Robin. sex, drugs, yeah. designer drugs, with a go-go. Like, we can control that. I was like, I would tell you I wish y'all could play in my joint or not. I could tell you, look, we ain't, we ain't doing that here. Yeah. We ain't doing this here. We're going to make it positive. We're going to start off with a prayer. We can do that. But when, yeah. when there's no supervision or guidance or the OAGs not able to breathe into you or you not able to breathe into the next generation coming behind you, then Satan running it at this point, exactly. right? Can I say one thing, though? Uh, Click at the mic. Thing. Okay, so you can't point the finger without three fingers pointing back at you. Right. I, I like some of the fault is on us and not necessarily us per se, because we are a big advocate of trying to get the kids right. getting go-go. But sorry to say, and I speak this all the time, it's the people that's before us, the bands and the people that are on, it's like they don't want to give that leeway up to show the young generation, yeah, somebody else that's close to your age is making it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, and another thing is you have to ingratiate, you know what I'm saying, the younger styles of your genre. Right. And a lot of, you know, in the past, a lot yeah. of our forefathers and people like that, they took a doodle on our style that we do now. But to y'all credit, y'all didn't stop. No, we and one, and one of the things I, I'm going I'm to say to this mm -hmm. is I told Chris when I, you know, he's coming to class and we t t taught him. One of the things I told him was the social power. This was before Don't Mute and all that stuff. Right. The social power of music. Right. There, there's no movement and no change in the world, not just America, that happened without young people and music. Exactly. And exactly. They deliberately pausing our music, right? So Hip hop, problem. because they know the history right. of movement. So they Civil put rights. pausing in it, you know, because the DJs used to play the music and put the, the messages and the, everything in the music, love. I mean, all the music was love. I mean, you had some talking this and that, but for the most part, love right. and peace music was being incentivized. You made money off of it. Now, kill music, drug right. music is what you make money off. And that's our enemy. The devil doing that. Some people like people to talk about, but that's who that's who it is, right? Nah, so, up. so what what I'm saying is, I want y'all to keep on doing what y'all doing, man. Because nah, the ball is in y'all court now. Nah. And the last question I want to ask is, what's next for, for Tob? Because because you know, I told said it earlier, Kakai made it possible for uh, brothers to get and sisters to get uh, Grammys. They play go go, right? So now I think everybody should be stepping up, creating an album, submitting it on time. And let's see what happened. I mean, right now, we got a record out right now that we collab with Malachi and Crazy Legs that right now, and we, we signed that up for like the Grammys for okay, this year. Good, so good. we got like we got a couple of uh we got a couple of uh records that we about to start working on. We got a record with Shorty Cody on that we worked on. We just doing a lot of different stuff, like we like a lot of different studio work. Okay. We we trying to think above just 
the regular norm, go go play every day of the week and right. play get paid. Yeah, yeah, get we trying over. to go yeah. to like we yeah. trying to evolve and go well, to coming, the next man. level. We get that museum open. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a whole nother platform for y'all. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we we our goal is to bring everybody together and, and have jam sessions. Y'all can come in, but we got something we want to go throw go in the lab with. Y'all not even gonna have to pay for it because guess what? It's gonna be in the, the go -go city. Music. The city supported us, so we got to give back to the city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The people support us before the city. Facts. You know what I'm saying? You know all the people, Jack Kim Foundation, you Scotty, know. Blue Sky Construction. All these different people supported us, right? So it's we got to get back to y'all. And then y'all got to get back, and y'all got to produce some good music. Oh, you know we're going to do that. <laughs> you know we're going to do that, man. Right. But for the most part, we but we just trying to just create new music, original music, so we can be on the Grammys and win awards and the sky's the limit for Gogo. We thinking past DC now. Well, people have been looking at Gogo anyway, putting their museum, but they don't give us our props. But hey, yeah. so so in closing, anything anybody want to say to the world? Uh, we coming. <laughs> this is T.O.B. Bandon Show. That's Nerd Marcus. That's Loso Black. That's Lil Chris. I'm E. Proc the Hybrid. Look out for T.O.B. everywhere. He That's got right. an album on, on major platforms. I got an album on major platforms. He gonna be on my album on major platforms, and he gonna be on major. And you know what I'm saying? This will be do. Go go ain't dead. Trust and believe that. We clap it back. Clap, yeah. clap, we ain't clap, never clap, go clap, nowhere clap, though. Clap. We just y'all didn't want us to be here, and we yeah. we ain't take y'all. Y'all, um, what they say? What, what uh, Gino Smith said? Um, they they wrote us off, and we ain't right back. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got that. All right, y'all heard it here from the MLK Junior Library, Martin Luther King Junior Library, Go Go Preservation Week. Enjoy all the other activities that's going on this week, y'all. This is what it's all about, the culture, preservation, love, peace, and unity. God bless. Good night.